Even when there's an entire healthcare system under pressure, individual stories can still shock. As well as being ill, it was complete and utter misery. That's your chemotherapy tablet. Edward Denmark has blood cancer. It makes him extremely vulnerable to colds and flu, so he tries to stay isolated. But last week he got an infection and needed emergency treatment. He says his local hospital's acute ward was chaos. It was very packed as it always is. And again, I can't sit on the chairs with the people. So they either put us in the store cupboard. There's like a store cupboard there. We either sit in there, but on this occasion, um, the store cupboard was locked or something. He ended up in a corridor, not being seen for hours, delirious with fever and frightened about catching another infection. I shouldn't say this, but I thought, is this fight worth it? What am I fighting for here? If I feel unwell now, I think, what have I got to go through before I can get the antibiotics in me? The NHS trust that treated Edward told us that, like across the health service, it's seeing unprecedented demand for emergency care, that staff are doing all they can to see the sickest patients first. Everybody's finding it very, very difficult, and it's not at all what people go into healthcare for. It's awful waiting. If you're ill, if you're worried about it, it's absolutely dreadful. Even if that condition isn't getting worse, which sometimes it is, um, and it, it's just it's just an unacceptable service. And that's out of a person's mouth who has got more experience than anyone sitting in government now. If the government don't listen to her, they're not going to listen to anyone. But the government says it is listening and responding. There's been particular pressures over Christmas because we've had a surge in flu cases, COVID cases, and also a lot of concern around strap A. We're putting more funding in, we've got more clinicians, we've got more staff working in the NHS. Of course, there's a range of factors that we need to do. But so far, these reassurances aren't enough to prevent more planned strike action or make current patients feel safe. Catherine Fatotzi, Sky News.